Hello students, welcome to Legacy AIS Academy. In this particular video, we are going to discuss about a phenomena that has been researched and has been in use in recent days, that is upward lightning phenomena. So we are going to discuss that what is upward lightning, what is lightning, why it occurs and how it occurs. So first of all, if you try to understand the context of this particular topic, recently the researchers from the Brazilian Institute have succeeded in taking pictures of the positive upward discharges of electricity from lightning conductor rods traveling to connect with the negative discharge from the lightning in the clouds. The phenomena is called as upward lightning or upward flashes and it has been known for long but the researchers succeeded in photographing it with the high speed cameras at a very high resolution in the recent time only. The researchers have captured the electric action in the Sao Jose dos Campos region, which is a city situated to the south of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And after the capturing this particular photograph, they finally published their research and photos in the open access journal called as Geophysical Research Letters in the December month last year. And recently in the Nature magazine, a very, very well-known magazine, about uh, where uh, scientific publications are published, have also published for the first time some of the research details by uh, American researchers. So let us try to understand that what is upward lighting. Now upward lighting can be simply defined as a phenomena whereby a self-initiating lightning streak develops from a tall object. These tall objects can be taller buildings, it can be windmills and any such kind of structure. And from these tall buildings, then this lightning streak start to move, start to travel in the upward direction or toward an overlaying electrified storm clouds. And for this to happen, storm electrification and the resulting presence of cloud charge regions are the enabling factors. Now, what are these phenomena? We'll discuss that in next uh, in the uh, later part of the video. Now, as far as this upward lighting is concerned, the vertical elevation of tall object, how vertically elevated the tall object is, it accentuates the electric field locally on the ground, resulting in conditions favorable for the initiation of an upward streak. And this upward streak in the climatological term is called as leader from the tall object. And this can also develop in response to electric field change that is created by the nearby preceding lightning flash. That means, suppose that in the nearby region you have a normal lighting that is the downward lighting that has struck or that has occurred. So as a response of this downward lightning, also many times we can see the phenomena of upward lightning as clearly we can see in this particular picture. So we have discussed about the term that the most important event that has to happen uh, for the upward lightning to happen is the development of the stepped leader. So what is the step leader? Now step leader in a very layman term, in simple term, can be described as a downward movement of negatively charged particles from a thunder cloud and this movement happens in a zigzag manner and this is something that is not visible to a human naked eye. So in more complex term, in more uh, we can say climatological term, simply it is a cloud to ground lighting strike it starts as a channel of negative charges which is called a step leader as it makes it part toward the ground. The step leader continues toward the ground in kind of a stepwise manner, a series of stepwise manner which is about 50 to 100 meters in length. Then the step leader can branch out also in many directions and that is why at the same time you can see many consecuted lighting strikes over a large area. So that is how a step leader basically forms and causes lightning. So as far as the upward lighting is concerned, the overall process can be classified into three different steps. In the first stage, we have the development of the step leader as we have discussed now and then the step leader start to travel toward the ground. Now gradually as the step leader start to travel toward the ground, what we see in the second stage is an intensification of the positive charges on the ground. Now, what do we have? We have in the atmosphere nearby the Earth's surface a huge amount of negative charge in the step leader and we are having intense positive charge on the ground surface. So due to this, we are having uh, electrostatic forces and these electrostatic forces causes the air above these tall buildings or towers to become ionized in nature. And as the air become ionized, we will know that they become more conductive and this is what happens in the second stage. Now, once this air become very, very conductive in nature, it develops into the ions. In the third stage, what happens, the channel of air just above the tall objects turn positively charged and it is start to streak or move in the upward direction in what we call as a upward streamer. 
And as the upward steamer start to move in the upward direction, you have the step leader that is moving in the downward direction. So basically what is happening, you are having a large scale movement of the negatively charged particles in the downward direction and the positively charged particles in the upward direction. And as soon as these two airs or as these two charged particles, volume of charged particles come in contact with each other, what do you have? You have a flash of lightning, what you call as the upward lightning. And as far as the U.S. Department of Commerce's National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, when the contact eventually made between the upward streamer and the step leader, the lightning channel is complete. And after the completion of lightning channel, it can uh, it can lead to the rapid flow of charges from the cloud toward the ground. And it takes just a fraction of a second to go from the step leader initiation to the final connection being made with an upward stream. And that is how many times you have both the uh, down uh, the normal lightning that is downward lightning as well as the upward lightning so many time for many time period the scientists were able uh, were basically attempting to understand the trigger mechanism behind the upward lightning and a total of 110 upward flashes has been observed with a combination of high in standard speed video and digital steel cameras, electric field meters, as well as fast electric field antenna systems. And the data that were collected from these photographs, high resolution photographs, these data sets were finally analyzed along with the correlated lightning location system data that where exactly the lightning has struck the surface or struck the building to determine the triggering flash type. And after that, the most effective trading component which scientists believe today is the propagation of the in-cloud negative leader during the continuum current that follows a positive return stroke. That means the most effective trigger is the strip leader, the negative charge leader that is coming from the upward direction as the continuing current moving from the ground surface or from the taller building toward the upward direction. And the meeting of these two is what we can consider as a trigger mechanism for the upward lightning. If you look at the major characteristic of the upward lighting, first of all, if you compare with the normal lightning or downward lightning, upward lighting is having a lower intensity and also the duration for which it lasts is also relatively much more lesser. Second, however, due to their upward movement, they pose a very strong risk to aviation, particularly to such planes which are flying close to the taller structure, tall building structures, especially during the terms times of thunderstorms because they can cause electromagnetic interference and that can affect the communication systems of the aircraft. The third characteristic is that if you talk about the frequency, so it has higher frequency of occurrences during the thunderstorms. So that is the three characteristic, major characteristic that have been, we have been able to identify in the upward lightning. So what is the significance of this discovery? So scientists believe that continuously all across the world, we are building many tall structures, especially since we are focusing more and more on renewable energy. There is a rapid increase in the building up of wind turbines, which are very, very higher, high taller in nature. So these structures are experiencing lightning currents from upward lightning at a much more higher rate than they might experience from the normal downward lightning. And it is believed that even many structures are experiencing 100 times more upward lightning as compared to the normal downward lightning. So due to this reason, there is a higher chance of damage to these structures. Also, scientists believe that it is still now not very, very clear that how can this upward lightning have an impact on the global atmosphere or precisely the atmospheric chemistry, atmospheric composition. May, it may result from the increase in lightning, especially upward lightning due to artificial tall objects. So in the next 30, 50, 100 years, when you are building more and more taller structure, it is interesting to see that whether these are significant enough to cause any appreciable changes in the atmospheric chemistry or not. So that is all about this particular phenomena of atmospheric uh, uh, upward lightning. I hope you understood the concept behind that. If you like the video, please hit the like button, share it with your aspirants as well as subscribe to our channel for more useful content. Thank you very much.